Conversations with Artists, brought to you by The Smith Gallery and Fine Custom Framing. Hi, I'm Debbie Smith, host of Art Talks. I'm so glad you could drop in on this conversation today. The reason I designed Art Talks is because I thought it was important that you, as the viewer, the purchaser, and the collector of fine original art, could remember this conversation and give you more value to the painting every single time you see it. Because art doesn't exist in a vacuum. It takes you to make it sing. So I hope that you like it, will share it, and certainly subscribe if you like it that much. So sit back and enjoy this conversation with Peg Belcastro. So Peg Belcastro, welcome to the gallery, Thank both, you. both here and on the walls. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the fact that you're showing my work. Well, of course, it has so much great energy and stories. I mean, you could tell this particular piece, and I'm, I'm just starting with this particular piece because it is so impactful. And that was what brought me to you. and. That was what touched me. That was the first thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Glad to hear that. So I know when people look at your art, they can get different feelings of what your art means to them, which is great because right. that's, that's what, what you want to do. about. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you start creating something like this, tell me sort of like what your process is. Well, um, I sort of start with a blank canvas and then just pick up some mark making tools and some ugly paint. I sort of ugly paint. use my paint okay. that I don't normally prefer and just get it on the canvas. Something to get rid of that big white space. Mm -hmm. And so there was a, I work in a series and there was a period of time during COVID that I was painting figures and um, all of the people were facing away from me. And I really don't know why that is huh. but all of them faced away from me and even now even though the people are turned around they still don't have any faces yeah i don't know what that's all about to well, be honest yeah, but it's, sometimes i think that's a good thing because then the face can be whatever well true the viewer wants it to be right right yes and then you know you're putting your work there but you're not putting your story necessarily like this has to be yes something yes absolutely it can be anyone and so. then, well, how do you come up with your palette then? Well, <laughs> oh, she yes. has she has props. I have props. <laughs> I'm sort of a color nerd, and most of my work is about color. Yes, you know um, that's primary for me. Even though value and composition are supposedly more important when you start, or when you're at least getting close to being partway done, but for me, my paintings are all about the color, and so oh. I do some kind of a nerdy thing here. I grab my colors and I grab my paints and I mix them all together and I keep them in color families and I take notes. And so I just come up with all of these color families, hmm. all these little swatches that um, I refer to. I'll pick a palette and usually I'll stick with the colors that are in that palette. Not 100%, but yeah. um, they guide me along the way. That is a really cool way to do it. Well, yeah, because, you know, if you paint just from the tube or from the bottle, um, you know, you get a certain color and some of them are very lovely, but you're not getting these uh, nuances that you can get when you mix. And so what, what medium do you work in primarily? These are all acrylics. Okay. Yes. I also have done oil and cold wax, which I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to go back here, oh. back to for a little bit this fall. Yeah. I'd like to see that. That'd yeah. be interesting too. Yeah. They're smaller. A lot yeah. smaller. All right, but I love I love your work. I love the Thank size you. of it, the breadth of it. The I mean, because the expanse I think gives you the story that takes you focuses in, right? More so than you know, sometimes when you work little. I mean, that still has an impact. But your work with all the color and everything, I think it it definitely needs the breadth of space. Well, and it's just really um, satisfying when you're painting this big to get your whole body into it. Oh yeah, all the body movements that go into that and to be honest you know making art is a solitary endeavor you're in your studio oh, all sure, by yourself sure. and when you're painting people this big it's almost like you have someone else in the room with you <laughs> that's sort of cool well, yeah. creepy too well could you know. be but but it could be it could be really neat you got some toddler sized people in there <laughs> <with you. laughs> and they don't talk so how do you paint i mean these this this canvas is um what 30 no 40 by 48 
Oh, 40, this is eight um, by 60. 48 by 60. So right. when you paint this big, are mm -hmm. you putting it on the wall and painting on the wall? Okay. I do paint on the wall. So that makes yeah. a lot more sense. And oh, yeah. What kind of studio do you use? Oh, my husband built me a studio. He did? He did. He's a home builder. Oh. And we uh, designed and built our house. I live up in Shermansdale. And then uh, about five years ago, he built me a studio because I was in our spare bedroom and I was doing oil cold wax, which are pretty oh, small. Yeah. But then I wanted to bust out and start doing big stuff. So he built me a studio and it's attached to our garage and greenhouse and sauna. Oh. And it's lovely, although it's getting smaller now. <laughs> I'm sure. When you're painting this big. I know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I have racks of oh my gosh. paintings to, for storage because, you know, I just... Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I thought it was the Taj Mahal when I first moved in, but now it's <laughs> But now more it's like, a little smaller. Yeah, yeah. But at least it's not like the shoemaker's children who never oh, got shoes. True, that's so true. So you got your own studio, even though your husband is a builder. Yep. Which sort of brings it full circle from I, what I understand. Did you also build houses? Yes, we moved to Alaska back in 2002. Alaska. <laughs> With no jobs, nothing lined up, just went up there with a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah. And so we started building a house sort of around us. We lived in the basement bedroom and we didn't have any plumbing for two years. We had to drive 10 miles to take a shower at the laundromat. Wow. And we used a little camping potty that a friend <laughs> lent us and then have to go empty that. Yes, well. We don't need to go into those details. <laughs> right, but um, yes, so we built, I designed it, we built it, we sold it, and then we started building more. So yeah. we built, I think, about six, six or seven houses up so there. So did you sell your houses once you built them? Yes, well, they all were right. all built on spec. We did oh. save one for ourselves. Um, I had become a real estate agent by then, and I... <laughs> I sold it to some clients who really loved it and needed a place to start before school started. And so when my husband came home from work that night, I said, well, I sold the house. <laughs> <laughs> so then we moved to Pennsylvania. We moved back wow. here. Wow. Yeah, so we're you from were, here. you're from here originally? Born and raised in New Cumberland. Wow. Where, yeah. where in New Cumberland? On Beacon Hill Road. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you brought some other things too, because one of the things that we always like to find out, you know, as collectors is what inspires you to paint. Mm -hmm. And do you have a muse or, or somebody, something that gives you that is the catalyst for you to create? Sure. Well, I did bring some things um, that were made by my father. My wow. father, my, both my father and my mom were big influences on me. But I remember as young as being four or five, my dad always had a wood shop in the basement. And I would take his hand and say, come on, dad, let's go build something. We built a lot of birdhouses back in those you days. <laughs> you know, He had a little set of tools for me. But um, he went on to build furniture and you know decks and build a family room in the basement and stuff like that. But as he got older, he started building these little toys for wow. kids. Yeah, and they're sort of cool. He would hand these out at uh, the local bakery when my parents would meet their friends there on Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. Kids would come in with their parents, and he would hand out these little things and mm -hmm. toys for tots. So as he got older, he things got smaller. But um, he he made things these things up until he was 90 when he passed wow. away. Wow. Yeah. Well, that is really cool. And then my mom is into color. She was very colorful. Mm -hmm. Our house on the inside was always colorful. Furniture, rugs, walls. So that so. was sort of what your background was. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Very supportive. I always knew I wanted to be an artist. Um, I sold my first painting to a teacher at Cedar Cliff when I was 15. Oh my gosh. Well, it that was, gives you a good feeling. Oh, oh my gosh. You would not believe it <laughs> because it was uh, 36 by 36, so three feet by three feet, wow. and I sold it for $40. And I thought, oh my word, $40, $40 was a lot yeah. back then. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this making a living by selling art is going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so were you trained then? I mean, I know in Cedar Cliff you were trained, but right. do you have a degree in art or just... Just a two-year degree. I went to Hack and All majored right. there in art and communication. And then I was very much into ceramics, and so I went yeah. to Bloomsburg for that as well. All right. But mostly I've taken um, classes like from Linda Benton McCloskey over at the Millworks, mm -hmm. taken a uh, class from Krista Harris, who we had come here to Harrisburg. All right. At HMAC, she gave a class. And um, online, Nicholas Wilton, I okay. took, taken stuff from him, Pamela Coey. 
wow. different people. So lots of different artists. Yes. Is there any particular artist through the years that you would say, that's the artist that I want to emulate or that's the artist that I most respect? Well, for me, it's not really the artist, like how they paint or anything, but um, what their philosophy is, I guess. Mm -hmm. And for me, Mark Rothko oh. really sticks out because his quote that I live by is that a painting is not a picture of an experience. It is an experience. Right. So when you're painting, especially the bigger ones, and you're getting your whole body into it, it is an experience that you know you try and translate so the viewer gets a sense of that, but still there's nothing like actually doing it. Right, but the way I look at it too is each of these paintings is a painting unto themselves, mm -hmm. but it is a part of you and all the experiences in your whole life right. that create this painting. So right. you know, somebody says, well, how long does it take you anyway? And you're like, well, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't gauge my time, I don't write it down. Absolutely But not. even if it took you an hour, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not saying your work takes an hour, but I'm just saying that even if it took an hour, mm -hmm. that for your whole lifetime, that got you to that hour point. Absolutely. Because oh, yeah. it's you, you're painting from your whole experience. Right. So um, is there anything that you're, I mean, I know you said you're going to go away from this a little bit, but you'll still do this kind of work. Yes, you know, I'm, I'm loving figures right now, so I've, I've done a, a year, or a year and a half of landscapes, mm -hmm. I've done the um, intuitive expressionist type thing, but I feel much better doing people. Yeah. So, um, but I want to get a little bit more abstract, more basic, and more okay. shapes rather than actual figures, I okay. think. Okay, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I love color field paintings where they're just all about color. Yeah. So I might morph again. Who well, knows? who knows? Yeah. I mean, you know, you've got a whole lifetime in front of Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But it's really exciting, I think, when you take a piece home to to listen to everything that you've been involved in. I mean, to be a builder, I mean, to work with your hands, to have that creative energy mm -hmm. from there and then into this. Yeah. Yeah. It, it all adds up. Like you said, you know, a painting might take a week, but um, it's 50 years in a week. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wow. Well, is there anything else that we haven't touched on that you would like to? Um, I guess the only thing I would say is that I really like to keep my artwork approachable yeah. and relatable. Um, I don't live pretentiously. I'm just a regular person. Um, I have other things I like to do. I love to cook and I love to bake and we have a big garden and I play the African marimba in a band. Oh, and wow. we have a little old senior dog and um, yeah. But oh my gosh, what a pleasure it has been Thank to you. have at least this the little conversation. Thank you. Yeah, this was awesome. Yeah. And I look forward to selling your work and representing you well. So, so far so good. We would love it if you came in and saw this work in person because it is pretty phenomenal. And you can get in touch with me at Debbie at fineart2u.com and that's to you. Dot com, or you can give me a call at 717-774-4301. Or you can just stop by the gallery at 190 Reno Avenue here in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. Again, thank you for dropping in on this conversation with Peg Belcastro. Thanks, Debbie. <laughs>